Hi there, this is Ranjit from tech2pass.com and welcome to this uh, 21st Q&A session and I want to apologize that yes, it's been almost two months since I did the last Q&A and the reason for that is I got just a little bit busy and I frankly do not know if you uh, guys really like this Q&A because I want to produce videos what you guys want and I need to now to know about it. Do you want that I uh, continue these Q&A and I would like that you uh, uh, click on the thumbs up button if you would like that i'll uh, continue this q a session and i think so doing this q a uh, every week might not be possible but yes uh, definitely twice a month i can do it so what uh, if you want these q a's to continue just uh, hit the like button so let's uh, get away with this q a session i have a bunch of questions not many and the first one comes from sanket uh, saxena and he asked me hey ranjit can you tell me the difference between dlna wi-fi direct Bluetooth and NFC. Let me start with DLNA. Actually, I had made a video about DLNA, uh, so you can just uh, uh, search on YouTube Geeky Ranji DLNA, you'll get these. But let me uh, briefly tell you about it. DLNA is a standard by which very uh, uh, your uh, compatible devices, for example, let's say most of the Android devices uh, support DLNA, they can talk to other DLNA enabled uh, devices. For example, I personally use DLNA for all my entertainment and media. For example, uh, all my media is stored centrally in one location that's DLNA enabled. For example, the NAS, you don't have to purchase expensive NAS. For example, your computer PC also can get DNA enabled by using free softwares like Twonky Media, etc. Uh, XMBC etc so uh, the beauty of DLNA is all your what do you say content for example let's say movies music etc is stored in a central place and you just stream it to the other devices for example it might be a WDTV uh, for example I uh, watch all my movies on WDTV but I don't have to physically uh, move with the USB stick and uh, put the movie in there it gets streamed the only thing for DLNA it, uh, is that all these devices have to be on the same network. For example, for home users, they have to be on the same router. Uh, that's one, the thing about DLNA and it makes your life very easy. For example, let's say uh, I just find this great music here. I can just send it to my DLNA enabled stereo receiver. That way DLNA is ideal for home environment to stream around media uh, wirelessly or wired. DLNA does not, it doesn't matter if the device is connected wirelessly. For example, this tablet is connected wirelessly or it's hardware. D DLNA does, it does not matter for DLNA. Next uh, uh, is Wi-Fi Direct. Uh, Wi-Fi Direct is nothing but a very simple technology. For example, let's say you have two uh, Android devices. Uh, traditionally, to connect it uh, via Wi-Fi, you need a router. With Wi-Fi uh, Direct, you can eliminate this router and these two devices can communicate directly. Again, uh, both devices have to support this Wi-Fi Direct standard. Again, most of the new Android phones, etc. Uh, are having this uh, Wi-Fi Direct ability. Next, uh, he wanted to talk about also Bluetooth. Bluetooth again, uh, we have been using it for a long time. Bluetooth is ideal for small transfers. Again, Wi-Fi Direct is pretty fast because it's Wi-Fi, it has a lot of bandwidth. With Bluetooth, you have limited bandwidth, uh, but again, you have a lot of devices with Bluetooth like uh, earphones, headsets, etc. And the last is NFC. NFC is again, uh, what do you say? Uh, Again, a communication protocol, but again, the amount of data that NFC can transport is very limited. It's a couple of bytes and I think the max is about one kilobyte. So what NFC can do is if you have two NFC compatible devices, generally you have to tap them and they can transfer the data. Again, uh, it has to be physical contact or it has to be very near the source. So again, it can be used for, let's say, simple tasks like you can uh, touch both the devices and uh, what do you say, image gets transferred or you just tap on an NFC tag and it can toggle Bluetooth, etc. For those things, NFC is also uh, preferable. And we are also going to see NFC for payments. For example, in chaos or stores f in future, you can just tap your mobile phone and the payment gets transferred. So I hope this answers your question. Uh, the next question comes from Bhanu Pratap and uh, he asked me here Ranjit I want to ask if I can install apps or put SD data on pen drive using USB or OTG cable and use them in my Xperia U. 
for example big games like nova 3 asphalt 7 modern combat 3 etc uh, again, uh, Xperia U, yes, it does support OTG, but personally, I haven't tried uh, all these games with USB OTG because I hardly play uh, games on my Android phone. So if any of you guys are already using an Xperia U Android phone and using OTG to play uh, load heavy games like this on the, what do you say, pen drive or whatever, do let me know in the comment section. It will be highly appreciated. Uh, next question comes from Priyankan and he asks us, Hi Ranjit, will Microsoft Surface Tablet? RT and complete version support .exe files. If yes, it means all applications that we use in Windows 7 will also work in Windows 8. My concern is that if exe start to run on tablet and smartphones, then they will completely bridge the gap between laptops and smartphone and tablet. There is a little bit of a confusion. Again, let me talk about Windows RT tablet. Uh, specifically the Surface RT, by which uh, what do you say Microsoft released. Uh, do note that these tablets run on the ARM architecture and not the x86. So your traditional Windows 7 or Windows XP applications will simply not run on these tablets. Uh, the applications that can run on this Windows RT uh, that uses ARM processor is uh, you have to download those whatever apps from the Windows Store. You cannot just let's say uh, load your favorite program or a game and expect it to run on this RT. It will simply not run. But the regular version of Windows 8, the, the Pro series or whatever, that will come with the normal Intel processor, the i5, i3s and the i7s. Yes, they will be able to run all those applications, even the old applications in the legacy uh, aspect of Windows 8. That's the desktop mode. And the next question comes from Pratik Dholani. Hey Ranjit, I want to buy a new router. I'm currently using a Binaton router with my BSL broadband. My problem with my current router is that my room is very far and I get only one to two bars. Distance about 10 meters. 10 meters is approximately about 33 feet. Dude, that's pretty uh, far away and you need a very good router for that. And he also says there are three walls in the bet between and budget is around 2000 and he wants a uh, N based router. Uh, the thing is that uh, at 33 feet, you uh, need a fairly decent powered router. These uh, very low budget routers will not do the job. Uh, my cousin is using a TP Link ADSL Wi Fi router and it is a uh, what do you say two antenna model i don't know the exact cost i think so it's a 2600 or 700 and he li lives in a duplex apartment and he says that he has good coverage so you can look at uh, that uh, model that's a uh, basically a two band uh, again uh, i doubt you can get away with a 2000 rupees budget adsl uh, wi-fi router that can cover you have to increase your budget i hope this info helps Next question uh, comes from Sanket Saxena. Hi Ranjit, I want to know which Android phone should I buy under 20,000? I'm confused between Samsung S Advance and HTC Desire X. And please also recommend your suggestions for the best phone under rupees 20,000. Again, uh, here are my some of my suggestions, but again, uh, uh, these suggestions change from time to time. So these are for December 2012. Yes, the Samsung uh, Galaxy S Advance is a very good phone. Uh, but I have heard some network related problems. I don't know if Samsung has solved it, but I've heard that uh, about this a couple months ago. So check Samsung forums if they have solved it. It's a great phone. It's probably one of the best bets I can say as of now. Desire X is also great. I've done a review of this phone, but the two cons with that phone is no front facing camera and video recording is limited to just 480p. If you're okay with that, Desire X is also great. Another phone that is just going to launch pretty soon is the LG Optimus L9 and it sports a 4.5 inch screen it's ips great screen it's a dual code phone it can record uh, video in uh, full hd again i haven't done the review of this phone i'm going to do it pretty soon but it also looks like a pretty good bet and i think so it's around 19,000. so i hope this info helps and the next question comes from sangaram and he asks us what is the importance of advanced cpu coolers like cooler master hyper 212 evo etc for a gaming pc Again, uh, I would say for a regular gaming PC, if you do not do any overclocking uh, and you're using a processor like i3 or i5, you seriously do not need a external aftermarket cooler because generally I have noticed that these external aftermarket coolers are only required if you do overclocking. I personally use an i7 processor on my desktop and yes, I'm using this aftermarket cooler like, uh, for example, Hyper uh, Master Cooler 212 Plus or something like that. And uh, 
I, I started to use this only because uh, the only hev heavy task that I do with my desktop computers is editing these YouTube videos. And because these are in HD, they do take up a lot of processing power. And when I'm editing and processing them, uh, almost all my cores are at 100% work. And I noticed uh, that sometimes it was exceeding 70 degrees Celsius. And for Intel processors, anything above 70 degrees Celsius is not a good thing. Hence, I installed this cooler. And after installing this cooler, the max temperature that I get, even when I stress my computer, is just about 58 to 59 degrees centigrade. So I would say, yeah, just notice that if, when you are generally using your computer, does your CPU temperature go abnormally high? If yes, then only uh, you, you need to install these aftermarket coolers. Uh, else, I don't think so you need to do that. I hope this answers your question. Next question comes from my wisdom. Hey Ranjit, could you please tell me if there's any accessory through which I can connect my pen drive to my phone and can you tell me how much does it cost? If you're using an Android phone, many of these uh, new Android phones support this OTG functionality. It's a simple cable. You can just buy this and then use a, a connector pen drive, etc. Again, just make sure your device supports it. Again, uh, regarding the cost, uh, I, I checked it on eBay and you can find it pretty cheap for about five or six dollars in retail stores it's, They sell it pretty expensive. So I would say just get it from eBay. I hope this answers your question uh, Next question is from Karthik Raj and this goes like I want to start an online teaching and want to record what I teach So what is the best screen recorder? I can use my teaching consists of more of written work Which is quite e easy in the classroom, but online. I don't know I heard that there are some USB writing pads with a pen provided which gives a view on the monitor of what I write on the pad. Any idea about that? Uh, if so, I need a prox cost of that device and which is the best one. Yes, you get Wicom tablets. Uh, it's like a pad and you get a stylus and whatever you type on it can be seen on the screen etc. Uh, I had used uh, these devices long back about five or six years ago and I did not use it uh, recently so I have no idea what's the cost as of now. I also have some other options for example if you're buying a new tablet you can look at this Samsung uh, Galaxy Note 10.1 tablet I have reviewed this and with this tablet you get this S Pen functionality and uh, you can jot down roads uh, etc do, do scientific diagrams etc uh, you can check out this video that I made and it's pretty good and you can just use a what you say uh, camera and record it that's also uh, one more thing and uh, I would say that uh, instead of going high tech or stuff like that, go traditional, just use a whiteboard, use a camera and just focus on the uh, whiteboard and write. So you can use the Wicom tablet or you can use a tablet which has a stylus like this uh, Note 10.1 or use the traditional camera and just focus it on the whiteboard. I hope this info helps. So these were some of the questions for this 21th Q&A session. If you have any other tech related questions that you would like that I answer in my next session, please post them below uh, in the comment section and start it with a Q&A tag. And again, don't forget to vote. I hope this video was helpful. That's it for now. This is Ranjit from tech2bus.com and I hope to see you in my next video.